Seeing so many numbers at once may be intimidating at first, but for a mathematician there is an order to this chaos. University of Virginia professor Karen Marr describes the Erdos Colredo theorem that is central to her research in discrete math. The way to describe it mathematically is you start off with a set. So a set, say your number is one, two, three, up to some point. What you want to do is take subsets of a size. So maybe you want to take all triples from that set. You want to get a big pile of them. But the condition you want is if you take any two of these subsets, they have to have a single point in common, at least. Maybe more, but they have to have at least one. And so the question is, what's the biggest collection of these sets you can make? And it turns out the answer is just the first thing you would try and the easiest possible thing. The answer is you take all of the sets that contain one. So you take all of your triples that include the number one, and that turns out to be the biggest. She and her colleague, Pablo Spiga, are using algebra to find a more structured way to prove it. When you first read these theorems and these results, it just seems completely random. It's like, make up some crazy nonsense and come up with some answer. It just seems all arbitrary. But there's way more structure sitting there, and there's reasons why these things are true. Master's student Alison Purdy is trying to adapt this theorem for rearranged number sets called permutations. After working in the field of chemistry following her first degree, she says it took time to get used to research in math. I find it's the intellectual challenge, really. It's not like some of the other sciences when you're dealing with physical experiments and all sorts of actual hands-on stuff. It's all intellectual, and it's quite a challenge to be able to uh, apply other people's ideas in new ways. And While they work out most of the algebra on a blackboard, sometimes these academics often study in a more relaxed atmosphere.